Hello once again, Dragon Ball Infinity. I am your DPI admin, Eichenbon, and this is another roleplay review. Uh, this time for Judgment. Um, Judgment is a final accounting of the life of Fusion, or uh, really as uh, another young man uh, who goes by the name of... Um, let me just get back to my notes here. Takao Abarashi, uh, or Taikao Abarashi. Uh, not sure how we would say that name. Um, can only pronounce it the way that I see it written. Uh, but this is the Judgment of Fusen. A Fusen who has perished, passed away. I believe there's another log that I'm still reading uh, where that takes place. A log called uh, The Last Breath. Um, and in this log, Fusen has received a body from another, as he, sa as, he, as he says it, another demon in line, and it was too good of an offer to pass up. Uh, King Yemma is, you know, noticeably, uh, takes notice of this, you know, asks him about it. You know, it's rare to see someone like you come through. Um, and then, and then I really, the synopsis of this log is very simple. I mean, Yama reads his file, and then he passes judgment. And to perhaps Fusen's surprise, perhaps to anyone's surprise, uh, Fusen goes to heaven. Um, and like I said in the last video, uh, this is kind of a, this is an act done by Sage. Uh, the file that uh, Yama is reading has some has some special notes in it, and there's certain things that have been left out on purpose, which is why the file is so short. So short and yet so long um, at the same time. Because what I was really shooting for in this moment was to show that while Yema is the one who delivers your judgment, he is he is the last person that some people may ever speak to. He is not your judge, actually. Uh, your life, your deeds, your beliefs, the things that you fought for, the things you strove for, the people that you helped, the things that you did, that's your judgment. Yama's just the messenger of your life's events. He's the final accountant of your life. And I was really trying to impart that he was someone that you could you could talk to. You could have one final say in your life about that it that there was no judgment for him. He had seen the worst of the worst that have come through his check-in station. He's seen the best of the best and he knows that sometimes a spirit just needs to needs to finally say the things that they need to say. And a part of me was really hoping that by playing that his character in this way, we'd get Fusen to open up. Now, we do, in a way. Uh, you know, Fusen has even a line in this, a really poignant line, that I didn't know that it could rain above the clouds. Because uh, as he's waiting for Gemma to pass his judgment, he asks if... if he asks about his former master teacher, f parental father figure that we saw in a flashback role play back during Consu Bonus, um, and Yama has a note that was left from him, but we never see what the context of that is, uh, and Fusen doesn't reveal it. He doesn't talk about himself, but that was that was what I was hoping for: is that we'd finally get to see Fusen open up, like if not to Yama, if not to this accountant of his life, uh, who's looking at all the things that he's done on page. If not to this person, I don't know who. I don't know how. I don't know when. It could, if it could ever happen. And so that was what I was hoping for. It didn't, we didn't quite get there. We we got close. We got probably as close as we'll ever get. We got to see Fuse in a very vulnerable place, and it seems like his afterlife is going to be um, a lot different than his life. Um, I thought this was a really... A really good log, and and I, I really would as the as the NPC as the roleplay admin kind of passing this judgment there. Um, I was really trying to to make this take as much time and for it to take as much space, and I I deliberately was writing it in such a way to just extend that period, just to to really make this character sit with themselves about what is on that page. What is King Yemma reading about him? 
to see what kind of reaction we would get. I and I like I know it's it's hard to tell with the character refusing if if the character refusing is the one who is feeling impatient or if the writer was feeling impatient. But I that was that was what this was supposed to be about. It's supposed to be this moment where Fusen can finally tell us something about himself. He can finally emote. He can finally let go, and we'll sit here for as long as it takes. I I was I was fully prepared to make this drag on for as long as it needed to to get something out of him, um, and I do think we got something. I do. Um, I just. Not everything I was hoping for, and I hope that as we can, as Fusion starts to explore the afterlife, we get to see we get to see him open up a little bit more. We saw it a little bit in the Gag Month reel where he got the body, and um, it it seems like this could be a good place for Fusion to finally tell his inner story, um, his emotional story, his you know the story of his person. Uh, because there's no more threats here. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, he's, you know, he, he's even he talked about how he wants to become like a farmer or something, and and that's the reason why I sent him to heaven. Um, that's the reason why I'd I'd always planned to send him to heaven instead of hell. Uh, one because it's kind of a callback to the series where when Deborah died, uh, instead of sending him to hell, they sent him to heaven because that would be quote unquote torture for him, and so. Uh, that's kind of what I'm shooting for a little bit, uh, to make Fusion come face to face with, uh, with people who have, who have lived good lives and have done good, and for him to know that he doesn't really belong in this place, and for that to be his punishment. His punishment is to be where he does not belong, um... I'm not trying to. Tr I'm not trying to change his character. By the way, I'm not trying to make Fusion into a different kind of hero or a different kind of anti-villain or villain or whatever, whatever your perspective of Fusion is. Um, I'm not trying to change his character, but I, I think that I genuinely think that being put into a place where you know you don't belong and having to confront that is much more of a testament to your will um, than than being put than being punished properly. Uh, there's a, and this is a very famous book, I'm sure some of you have read it, but there's a book called Crime and Punishment uh, by Dostoevsky. And in that book, that explores what it's like for someone to get away with a crime um, and how it drives you mad to do so. Uh, it's, it's probably, it's like in my top ten books of all time. And the... In, in the end, what happens is that the, the, and you know, this, I'm not, hope I'm not giving away a book that's, you know, almost a hundred years old, but, uh, in the end, like, that, that character can't live with what he's done, even though he's gotten away with a murder, uh, he can't live with himself, he goes, he goes crazy, and he ends up, like, like, the only way that he can actually make an accounting for himself is is to turn himself in, even though he got away with it all, even though there was no punishment. You know, he would have just gone on and continued to live his life, but he knew in his heart that what he'd done was wrong, and that drove him to the nearly to the brink of madness. It made him physically ill. It made him sick uh, to do that. And in a very similar way, there's a television show, my favorite television show of all time, called The Good Place, and uh, in that show, the the titular character the main character Eleanor is brought to the good place but she knows that she doesn't belong there and it drives her to become a good person it drives her to change as she's both trying to like escape the afterlife authorities but also learning that all of her all of her con the consequences of everything that she's done and having to to face really uh how truly bad of a person she was um and, and I mean that show's very light, very humorous, nowhere near uh, crime and punishment, but similar similar ideas. And so that's that's why Fusing goes to heaven. That's why he goes to heaven. This is his punishment. Um, it may not seem like it on the surface, but this is a punishment. It's maybe even the worst punishment that you can receive is to uh, have done terrible, awful things, and for you to be the one that has to confront them. 
and has to learn and grow from it. And whether or not that changes Fusion, whether or not that uh, serves the device, the narrative device that I'm hoping for with it, with both uh, Crime and Punishment and The Good Place, we'll see. Again, I'm not trying to change the character. I'm not trying to make him into a good guy. Um, but I, I do think that this was, I think this was the correct punishment for him. Um, I don't think Hell was good enough. Anyway, this is a great log. I'll see you guys on the chat channel.